In the rock cycle, we need to know how to cycle between the three different types of rock, which are igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. In this video, I'm going to run through the way which I used to remember these, because to be honest with you, I find it quite difficult to remember off the top of my head all the keywords we need. So I'm going to explain to you how I go about remembering this. And I always, for whatever reason, I just, I just imagine that igneous is the first thing that we make. Okay? And so the only thing I really remember is that this all starts with volcanoes. Just like the formation of the Earth's atmosphere, we have volcanoes which are going to be spewing out all sorts of different um, types of materials. They're going to be spewing out um, gases. They're also going to be spewing out lava. Okay? And this lava originates from inside our volcanoes. And it's coming up from the um, from the Earth's mantle. So, as this uh, lava erupts, it can solidify on the side of our volcano. It can also solidify inside the volcano, okay? Somewhere like this, which we call a magma chamber. And this leads us to having two types of uh, igneous rock. The rock that's formed from lava that's escaped from the volcano, it's exited volcano, we call extrusive igneous. Because it's exited the volcano. And the uh, magma that is cooled down and solidified inside the volcano, I call intrusive igneous. Because it is solidified inside the volcano. We're going to talk about the differences between those in a second, but now we need to know what happens next. So, um, either the rock that's already on the surface or the rock that's inside the volcano um, in magma chambers that can get brought up, um, brought up to the surface will eventually be weathered and eroded. Okay, so our two key words for this stage here, weathering, which means breaking the rock down into smaller pieces, and erosion, which means that the rock is transported. So what can happen is our rock can get broken down into small fragments or sediments and they can get transported by rivers, by ice and glaciers or by the wind. They can get transported from the uh, volcano, from where the, where the igneous rock is found um, and eventually they will um, reach seas. Okay, and what we get here is our little grains or our sediments will start to um, be deposited okay, into our sea and eventually they will start to build up along the bottom. Okay, and we call this process sedimentation. So these little fragments of igneous rock that have been um, eroded will eventually build up on the bottom of seas and as they build up and build up and build up and build up, the pressure of the sediments above it starts to compress or compact this rock down. Okay, so over time we start to get some compaction. And what this does is it squeezes the rock together, it squeezes out any water or any other, um, any other substances that might be between them. Um, and eventually they will form into layers. The last step is that certain chemicals can cause the rock um, sediments to become cemented. Cementation. And this, if you like, glues or cements the sediments together. And this, at the bottom of seas, is where we get our layers of sedimentary rock forming. Okay, this process takes a very, very long time, millions of years, but eventually we get sedimentary rock forming. So that's type two. The third type of rock, we don't actually need to know a huge amount about it, 
it's relatively straightforward. All that happens is over, again, over a very, very long period of time, this sedimentary rock can, be can become buried very, very deep within the earth. And the deeper it gets, the more pressure there is from the material and rock above it. So we get a huge amount of pressure. Because we have so much pressure, we also get a lot of heat. The rock is all squeezed together extremely tightly, which generates a large amount of heat. And this pressure and heat is enough to actually change the chemicals within our sedimentary rock. So it can change it into metamorphic rock. So eventually the chemicals are changed and we get metamorphic rock. Can you think about the word morph? That means a change. Okay, so there is some form of change to the chemicals within these rocks. If our metamorphic rock gets um, buried even deeper and there's even more pressure and even more heat, eventually this rock will melt. And when it does, it will turn back into magma. So, we cycled all the way from forming igneous rocks, both inside volcanoes, intrusive igneous, and outside extrusive. Those igneous rocks have been weathered and eroded, they've been transported to seas, um, they've been deposited um, in the process of sedimentation. Sediments are compacted together and then become cemented together, forming our sedimentary rock. That sedimentary rock has been put under high heat and pressure from the metamorphic rock, which is eventually melted, and we're back to where we started. The only other thing we need to know is the difference between extrusive and intrusive igneous rocks. So if I draw two um, really bad drawings of rocks here, okay, and let's say that this is our intrusive rock, and this is our extrusive, um, we can tell the difference between these just by looking at them. And the reason is, an intrusive rock cools down inside the volcano where it's still very hot. This means it cools slowly. And that gives lots and lots and lots of time for big crystals to form. So if you were to look at an intrusive rock, you would see quite large, well-defined crystals within this rock because it's cooled down over quite a long period of time. With our extrusive rock, that will have um, uh, gone out to the uh, surface of the earth, it will have uh, been in contact with cold air, maybe even water, and it means it will cool down very, um, very, very quickly. Okay, so it, it'll, it will be, um, it will reach the earth's surface and it's going to cool very quickly. And what this means is the magma will solidify extremely quickly and there will only be time to grow very small crystals. So if you were to look at the rock, you would see lots of tiny little, okay, maybe even, you might not even be able to see the crystals unless you use um, a hand lens or a microscope, but they will form extremely tiny crystals. Okay, two examples of these types of rocks, an intrusive rock with nice big crystals, you might have something like granite. For an extrusive rock, you might have something like basalt or pumice. If we flip back to our rock cycle, um, sedimentary rocks that you might know about, things like limestone and chalk. Uh, metamorphic rocks, um, any rock can form a metamorphic rock, but we get things like marble which actually forms from limestone when it undergoes metamorphism. Okay, we might have things like slate as well. Okay, thank you very much. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you um, find these videos useful. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.